Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to carry on using the flexible uh, flower paste that I did in my uh, recent video when I showed you how to make it. Uh, I'm going to redo some of the flowers that I've done in the past with the flexible flower paste but for a change today I thought I'd do something a bit different. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a rhododendron. One I've been on my list for a long time to do uh, and using the flexible flower paste makes it even better. So I'm going to take you down to my uh, board and I've got my phone on here and did a little video of uh, some uh, rhododendrons that I found in flower in the park when I was walking the dog the other day. Sorry about my fingers getting in the way, but this is uh, a rhododendron that's an early one that's out, which is the very, very pale pink ones. Uh, the one I'm going to do is a deeper pink. I have already made some uh, flowers up, so this is one that I've, uh, I've made up already. So that's the colour that I'm going to do it. Uh, so I'll just take that off now. Rhododendrons come in loads and loads of different colours, so it's a matter of what sort of colour you want to do really because it's like a lot of other flowers there's a lot of variation in them um, but basically a lot of the principles are basically the same so the cutter that I'm going to use to make the uh, flower is I'm going to use a simple leaf cutter now if you haven't got a simple leaf cutter uh, you could use a rose cutter because I'm going to turn this the opposite way up so it's point down and round bit up to make the petals now because a rhododendron has a lot of different a uh, lot of flowers together in um I don't know how do you, in like in a pose uh, we have to make each in individual individual flower so from what I can see in majority of heads of rhododendrons there are about five flowers in one head so I'm going to show you how I made the head. I'm also going to do the leaves. I'm going to do them freehand. I'm going to do them the old fashioned way because I haven't got a veiner for it. I did try to make one, but unfortunately the veining is not very strong on uh, rhododendron leaves. So it was impossible to get a good impression on it. Um, plus I found a new way of doing um, my own veiners anyway. So that's something that I'm going to do later on down the line. I'm going to experiment with that. Then I'll come back uh, with a video showing you how I made the veiners so right so let's get on with this so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the stamens now you've got the stamens and you've also got uh, like a very very fine pistol so if you've watched the uh, previous videos I've done for the um, passion flower and for the uh, what was the other one I did oh the um, Clematis. Uh, basically, I'm making the pistol the same way as I did with that. So you need a very, very, very fine wire, the finest that you can find. I think the wire that I've got here is um, a 30 gauge. It's either a 30 or a 32 gauge wire. This I can't remember which one I use, uh, but I have some spares cut up, so I'm going to use the bits that I've got left over. So you need a tiny, tiny piece of paste. I'm talking tiny. Roll it into a sausage like we did with the um, the other flowers that we've done. And then put it onto your wire. Now depending on which paste you're using will dictate whether you need to glue your wire or not. But with most of the paste that I use, the flower paste and this flexible paste, they are very um, sticky. So you don't need any glue on your wire. So start rolling it. You want to almost roll it as thin as the wire itself. Take that off the top. Bit of spare. Get rid of that. I just want to roll it slightly past the end of the wire because you have got like a little cap on the end now it, it wants to be probably about that long so I'm going to take that bit off the bottom there just get your nails in and take that off throw that away and then if you get it between your finger and your thumb then any spare paste that you've got there if you just press it down 
this is only very tiny so we're talking about minute with every little bit that we're doing with this because the flowers are so small then just roll your paste back a bit and then give it a bit of a curve so it's curved over like that just give that a roll again to make sure I haven't flattened it so you've got a bit of a curve on so if you get that use my yellow pad here to show you put that on there right so we'll just pop that to one side next thing we need to do is we need about five very fine stamens so I've got two four five nearly down to the end of that bunch so if you get them all together and get them all level as level as you can when you fold them in half they're not going to necessarily be totally level but get them as level as you can fold them in half like that right so once you've done that I'll just put that on the edge of my board so I can get hold of those and you want a uh, then you want a 26 gauge wire I've got a piece here somewhere I'm going to sort out which one it is that one I'm going to cut that in half because that's too long I don't need that that long I'm using probably about a quarter of a, a wire here for these because you've got, you're going to put quite a few flowers together which is going to form a stronger wire for your base of your flower Right, so I need some tape. I think I need to cut some tape here. So I'll get my trusty little machine out because I haven't got enough tape ready. I'm using the uh, Nile Green tape, the lighter coloured one. And I put that into my trusty little thing. If you can get one of these from your no, that's the wrong one. I don't want that one. I want this one. And I've just dropped my veining tool on the floor. I've got another one there. It's alright, I've got a spare. I'm a bit ham-fisted. No, uh, if anybody's watched my videos before, I'm always dropping things. So that's nothing new. I'm sure we all do it. I'm not the only one, but like, unlike a lot of people, I wouldn't start the video again or turn the camera off when I do it because if anything goes wrong, as I've said before, people need to know how to fix it. If it's that sort of thing that needs fixing, that just means I need to get down and pick that up. But anyway, there I've got my half width tape, so we'll just put that to one side for a minute. Get my wire. What's that one? Oh, that's a stamen there. We've got a spare one. And... Get the end of your tape. I'm just going to move my camera up a bit this way so you can see what I'm doing here. More comfortable for me to do it this way rather than leaning over. I know sometimes I go off camera and if I forget, I do apologise. So, get your tape going round the top of your wire, like that. Now then you can do it either way, you can either put your stamens in first or you can put your pistol in first, whichever is better for you. If you just try and get them levelled up again, sit those in the top of your Let's bring those up a little bit. Top of your wire. You need quite a bit showing because they are quite long of the sermons in the centre of uh, this flower. So once you started that off, then you want your um, pistol, which is this part here. Now what I'm going to do first, because when I did these originally, I put the sermons in and then curled them after I put that in. It was a bit, it's a bit easy to do it this way around. So if you get a scissor... So like you do when you're curling ribbon, get your stamens on it like that. And just run them, hang on, wrong side of the scissors. 
run them up like that so you've curved them over and just spread them out a little bit so they're not all bunched up so do sort of spray out a little bit and then get your pistol in that goes behind so it's curving the same way as the stamens are and then take that down Trying to go under my camera then, <laughs> thinking I've gone out of shot and I haven't. <laughs> so I'll tape down with that. Right, so then you can go in and you can just your stamens how you want them to be. Right, so I'm just going to pop that to one side. We'll come back to those when we come to the colouring bit. Let's get rid of that. So wrap me paste up so I've got some pink already made up don't need all that get some paste out move that out of the way and just get some white fat for my board to roll out on I think I need a bit more white fat on there. I think they're quite enough on. Make sure that's stuck to you, but that's better. Get it fairly thin, but I'm going to make a groove here. As I say before, if you haven't got a groove rolling pin like I have, like this, um, use your groove side of your board. So I'm going to start and I'm going to roll that up like that. That's just ruching up a little bit, so we'll just... Just even that out. Like that, and then I'm going to cut out five petals. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if you're using your groove board, don't forget, roll it out on your board, turn your paste over so you can see where the ridge is before you start cutting out. Don't try and cut it out on your board. Right, so we'll just take those out of there. Right, so we've got the five petals there. Get rid of that paste. Don't need that anymore. Snap that up. And then we'll put those, the wires on those. So I should have enough wires here, I think. Let's just have a look. No, that's not. four five there we are so the next thing we need to do now is to put your wires onto your petals just a minute I'll just check these wires and make sure they're not no they're the wrong size of wires they're too thick I'll cut another wire. You need a, a, quite a thin wire for this. So I'm going to use um, 
use either a 30, 32 or a 33 gauge wire. This is 33 that I've got. I don't know where I got these from, so I couldn't tell you that. I'm going to cut that into five. Two, three, five. They're only very small of these petals, so you don't need thick wires for these. Then get your wire up the centre of your groove. I am gone right too far up on these. might only colour one of these because I don't know whether these are going to stiffen up in time because I'm doing everything from scratch from making the petals to colouring them I didn't leave myself anything to colour when I was doing all, getting all my prep work done make sure you twist your wire into your paste so that the stem text on it doesn't unravel now we don't need to thin the edge of these because the way that I'm going to vein it because I'm not using any veiners for this I haven't got a veiner for it but from what I can see on a close up of the pictures and I have looked at bigger pictures online if you go online and just put in pictures of rhododendrons they'll all come up and you can get all the colours there and you can have a close look at them if you find pictures that have got close-ups of the actual flower uh, that makes it easier right now then I need two tools for this I need a Dresden tool which I've got a metal one here it's actually a, um, a dentist tool is this uh, and your uh, silk burning tool so if we turn your petals over get them onto your finger and then at an angle like this and I'll just put my camera down a bit that way then go up your petal up one side like that this is the way the veins go on uh, a rhododendron and then turn it over and then on the other side do the same thing up the other side going at an angle bringing it round on the top like that and then the next thing that you need to do then is there's a groove up the centre of the petals if you get them on a pad or something lay it down flat like that hold the wire get your dresden tool the narrow end of it with the heel and then just pull it up the centre of your petal like that and then bring in the bottom part of the petal like that then you can put that onto your foam to dry I should have some foam somewhere here just bear with me a second oops just pop that on there so just pop it in in your, I can't lift it over because I've got all my powder colours on there so but you've seen me do it before so you know what I'm doing so again turn it over so that the ridge is on the back side of the petal at an angle on the edge of your finger and go up your petal like that frilling it round the top and then up the other side at an angle I'm using a bit wider bit so I've got you grooving sands out a bit more on there you get more detail into your veining onto your pad up the centre and pinch that bottom bit together like that it's a bit like an orchid throat on some of the smaller orchids then put that into your foam so I'll just finish off doing these You've seen what I'm doing, so if you just watch what I'm doing, I'll, sh I'll shut up. Wrong way around, that way. You could do it from the top going down if you wanted to. 
you don't have to start it from the bottom as long as you get the veining going in the right direction that's fine Oops. Sometimes they drop off like that. Get it right down to the bottom, miss a bit there. That's it. Then you groove up the centre. Like that. Shape it and onto your form. Oops. That side and up there. Just checking the camera to make sure that you can see what I can see. And then you groove up the centre like that and shape it. And on to your form. Right. Just put that to one side. We don't need that anymore. Get rid of that. And I'm going to go on to the green paste. I'm going to show you how I made my leaves. Now, I made the leaves freehand. And I did, really didn't want to go as big as they are on the actual bush. Because if you look at rhododendron, a lot of the leaves are really big the problem with that is when you're doing things in sugar sometimes if you do them too big they can look a bit ugly and whatever so I've got different sizes that I've done these are already colored and varnished so I've gone from that size up to that size they're all different none of them are the same but there again, they are a bit iggledy piggledy like that on the back of the flower. If you have a close look at them, if you're out for a walk in the parks, it w in some places, because the weather's been quite mild, some there are some that are out now. But generally, it's a little bit later when they come out. Right, so got my paste going, roll that out. Now, obviously, you don't want to go as thin with this. As you would normally do. Because leaves tend to be a bit fleshier. So it's one. You don't have to worry about getting it too thin. And then with my groove rolling pin. Do my central groove. Or ridge. And then you want your. Uh, cutting tool. Oh there it is doing quite well today I haven't lost a lot I'm just going to cut one out like that you don't have to be too precise with this because once you get the uh, the leaves done they'll look fine nobody's going to criticise them because if you look at the actual plant itself as I said there's a lot of variation in the leaves so I won't worry about that too. They don't even grow evenly with small ones. You get small ones growing in between big ones and what have you on that sort of uh, plant. So I've got a 26 gauge green wire here. So I'm just. This is a bit long, but I'm going to use this anyway because this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to use that as my bottom bit. Now you do need your wire to go up as far as you can with leaves. Right. 
Right, so turn that over. I'm going to put that onto my pad like that. Uh, I'm going to thin the edges. There it is. Just gently go around the edge. Because this is quite soft, I'm going to roll it rather than pulling it round. It's a bit like working with porcelain, is this? If it's very fresh, which this is, it can tear if you're not careful. Right, so done that. Then again, back to your Dresden tool. This is how we used to do leaves before we had veneers. When I first started, veneers weren't in like they are now. Uh, and then a central line up the centre of your leaf, like that. Now the veins are quite fine on um, the rhododendron, so start by just putting the veins in. You don't have to go right to the edge with these either because they don't. Then just turn that round the other way and then following the same lines... up like that now then the leaves on the rhododendron unlike other leaves they don't curve up that way they curve back that way so what I'm going to do is if I bring this form over that I've already got my leaves on that I've done and get the leaf that I've just made where is it there and then what I'm going to do then is rather than putting it face up, I'm going to put it face down like that. So I've got it bending backwards. So then it looks like, like that. If you can see how I've done that. That's the back, that's the front. And then put that to one side to dry. Right, get rid of that. So, the next step now is colouring. So I'm going to start off with the uh, stamens, wherever I've put them. There. I've got some colours already out on my kitchen roll here. On some of the flowers that I was looking at, particularly these pinks, I'm using, um, what's it called now, when I find where I put it, oh it's here, burnt orange, sorry you can't see that there, burnt orange, This is these are all from Edible Art, Edible Art all these colours, so that's the one that I'm going to do for the small stamens, I think that's the brush that I use there, yeah. And you just catch the tips. Of these stamens. Like that. No colour on the actual cottons, they are quite white of those. Just get a bit more colour. That's a bit better. That's that part done. And then I'm going to swap over to uh, a fine green brush, wherever I've put it. Oh, it's on here. And then I've got some tropical lime here. And then just catch the very tip of the pistol there. Okay. Pop that to one side. I don't know whether these have stiffened up or not, but I'm going to try. Let's have a look. I'm going to very carefully dust these now. 
Now, what I've done here is to get the colour. Sorry, no, I've used two different colours here. I've mixed one colour and I've used one as it is. So, the one, the colour that I'm using for the base of the petals is um, this is just called pink from Edible Art. It's one of the black top range. If you look for the black top at uh, Edible Art World of Colour. Uh, dot co dot uk and it's under the black tops is that some of the purples and lilacs that i've used in the past are all under the black tops if you're looking for those sort of colors so i've got a brush a narrow dusting brush here i've got and i'm just going to use the pink on its own here now as you can see at the side of it there's some that's a bit different that's for a different part of the uh, petal so i'm just going to brush all over the petals with this pink Sorry, just dust the edges of the petals, I beg your pardon. I didn't dust all over with it. I'm getting carried away. And then also on the back, just catch the edges of the petals on the back. Just one. I'll have to get it on, get my finger underneath it to just to uh, give it a bit of support because these are still very soft. Normally, I would let these set for a bit longer. Je I found when I was doing them originally, I think I'd let them set for probably about an hour, a couple of hours, something like that, and then they were firm enough to dust. But I mean, when you're doing a live demonstration, unless you've left some, which I should have done. From the original ones, um, you have to wing it. I know sometimes I have them ready and I remember to leave them, but I hadn't done this time, so I do apologise for that. But there again, it just shows that it can be done. And then just reshape your petals if they go a bit out of shape. I mean, they will hold the shape when I put it together. It's just that for the colouring bit, that's a little bit, just a little bit tricky. Because these are soft and a little bit greasy, they do take the colour okay anyway. And the last one. Right, so once you've done those, these individual flowers are a bit like um, an Alstroemeria where you get one petal or sometimes two petals that are a different design to the rest of the petals so what I've done here is I've taken some of the pink and then I've also mixed into it some black I think it's black currant this one which is a de very dark burgundy and mixed them together to get this deeper pink so you're still getting a similar sort of shade but a darker colour and then what I've done then is you get one of the petals turn it the opposite way around and then dust up the centre like that and bring it out like that you only do this on one of the petals per flower and as I said you need five flowers to make a head right so once I've done that I can reshape that afterwards because that has gone a little bit out of shape and then uh, somewhere here I should have a cocktail stick that I've used just bear with me while I find it there it is then what I've done is take the lid of the black currant and I just need to get some more of this because the others evaporated where's my little squeezy thing And I've just had hold of it somewhere. 
Where's it gone? With me hiding underneath something. And I'll try and do it without. If I do put a little bit into the lid, that's it. And then mix that in with your burgundy. Like that. And then just put little dots in the burgundy. And then reshape that like that. So that we've got that with your little dots in it. So that's that one. So we'll get rid of those out of the way. Get, put that back in the bottle. This is isopropyl that I've used, but you can use any clear alcohol or uh, um, if you can't use alcohol for religious reasons, you can use the isopropyl, that is fine. Uh, or you can use um, lemon extract, I think it is. Somebody said, I've never tried it with that, but I would think that's a bit, a bit too much water because it's got water in it and you've got to be very careful when you, anything that's got sugar in, it's going to dissolve if you use anything that's wet. So you can't use water for that reason. Right, so the next step now, oh, we'll do the leaf. Colour the leaf. We'll just get rid of those out of the way. Leave that to dry in your lid and then you can put your lid back on there. We'll just get rid of that over there and that over there. And get my other... And then I'm just going to dust this. Now, I won't be able to do much with this because this is far too soft anyway. But I'm just going to dust it just to show you when I find my green brush. That'll do. So I'm using rainforest for this to dust the, uh, the leaf. Hang on, I'm doing the wrong side out of that's the front. I've forgotten I turned it over. I'm getting ahead of myself here. You notice when you start dusting your leaf, the veins start showing up. Now on the actual leaf, the central vein is a lighter shade of green. Now if, you want, if you're good at painting, what you could do is to paint that in by mixing some tropical lime or, some, or lime or whatever and painting that in if you want. I'm not doing it on this because I don't have a steady hand so I'm not going to risk it. So that wants to bend back and then give it a waft over the back to leave it light. I've got too much on there because I got carried away doing it on the wrong side. Reshape your petal and then when it's dry then uh, you need to glaze that with some leaf glaze which I've got here. Did I put my brush back in there? No, I didn't. It's here. So some leaf glaze and just glaze all over the front of it with the leaf glaze, like that. And then reshape the petal. Now what I can do with that then is if I put that onto the foam but this time put it onto the raised up part so that it keeps its shape like that. Okay. Make sure that when you've done any glazing with this, don't leave your brush to dry because that'll go rock hard if you're not careful. So I always keep some glaze cleaner, the isopropyl in a separate bottle just for cleaning brushes. So that give that a clean. Then wipe on your kitchen roll and put that to one side to dry. That'll evaporate fairly quickly. So if we get rid of those, that now, so we finish with that. And get those petals off of there. And we can get rid of that as well. Right. Now, 
to get my stamens and some tape don't forget when you're starting to tape to stretch your tape at the beginning and find out which is the stickiest side and that's the side that goes against your wire so start that off round your base of your stamens just bring those back around again like that and then if you give your petals a little bit of a bend back if you get hold of it like that and bend that down on all of your petals just have to be careful with this because these are still quite soft so I need to reshape them once I've uh, bent the wire back so you're going to flatten things a bit on there One good thing about when they're small like this, you can still do them while they're while they're soft because unlike the anything that's larger that tends to flop around a bit, you can't uh, you can't really get them in straight away. So get it so your petals at the base of your tape and start taping your petals in. Oops. I'm going to overlap those two there. You can adjust your petals once you've got them in. You need be to bend your wires back a little bit. And like I've said before, when you when you put in petals round like this, it's important that you curve the bottom of your petals so that they fit in when you uh, when you put them into the flower and just bring that round that way a little bit and that round that way a little bit and then if we get the last petal generally it seems to go behind where you the stamens are curving away so if you try and get it in the back like that And then tape down. I'm just being a bit carefully because it looks like one of these petals might drop off. But I have got all my flowers already made anyway. So, and then you can just adjust your your petals once you've got them all in. Into shape. That's not quite going to behave itself because it's still too soft. So I'll just get one of the ones out that I've already that have already set these here, and you can I can still adjust these because they're still with them being a bit firmer, they're easier to move around. So that's basically what you're aiming for. Let's get rid of that one out of the way. So once you've done that. I'll get all my flowers over that I've already made and my leaves and then we can start putting all this together so I'm going to start off by getting the middle one get your tape underneath that And then start putting your side ones in. So I need to bend those out a little bit like that. That wants to come up a little bit up there. That's it.
probably could have got another flower in here. Yeah, I think I can. So if I put that one in that's still soft in there. Like that. Now if you wanted to make this bit, this is slightly smaller than life size is this. So you could use a larger size cutter to do that. Just tape that down. You always tape down in, in between. You find that when you're putting anything else in that... that it grips better when you're taping things together. There we are, so that's the flower head there. So we'll put some leaves in now. So I've got some small ones here. Put that one in first. Put it a bit lower down than the flower and I'll put it in between one of the flower heads so you can actually, well, I will do when it stays where it's supposed to stay. This is where you need to keep your tape tight. Just pull that in like that. That's it. Then we'll put another slightly larger leaf in at the other side. Pull that down, make sure that's nice and tight in. You need to make sure that you pull your wires down right down to the tape. That stops them from moving around. I know I've said it before but I'm repeating myself because you get new people watching these videos that I haven't watched other videos where I've mentioned this before and uh, obviously that one's a smaller one, we'll put that in round here not everybody's watched all of my videos so they won't all know What's what? Put that in at the other side. <coughs> Pull that wire down. Make sure that they're all nice and tight in. Sorry about that, that's my dog. He's heard something outside, so he's warning them. And put one of the bigger ones in behind the small one. And the last one. And tape down. So there we are. So that's my take on a rhododendron. I'm just going to move these flowers off of here and that can put the, this in the block. So then you can see the, uh, the finished flower. Put that in there. Hang on. So, 
there we are hope you've enjoyed the video anyway don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've got any questions about anything or uh, anything you'd like to see me do leave it in the comments below and uh, I'll see you in the next video so take care stay safe see you soon